Comments to. I guess uh, my only, only question, but I hate to open this up. Um, and I know more than I double on page two of his, his uh, comment uh, under phasing. Um, Maureen, why, you know what I'm going to say. So. Yeah. Um, I guess I'd just like to say that all the corrections he recommended on phase one, I've, I've made those changes already. Um, in addition, any place in the ordinance where it said that you needed uh, the signature of the majority of the voting members. Um, there was some question last week about who could and could not sign plats, and I spoke with the town attorney, and we both agreed that using phrases like the voting members was, uh, was difficult at best. So uh, I've changed it to a majority of the planning board who could sign a plat um, rather than a majority of people who were voting on it. Um, so that's that's a minor change. Going on to, to page two, um, I had, when I first read the town attorney's letter, thought that he had concerns about including a prohibition against site work. In fact, what he was doing is taking the one place in the ordinance where I had added that and replicating it everywhere else where I had not put it in yet. So every place in this letter where he's recommending the statement about site work, what he's in fact doing is making uh, the ordinance consistent. So instead of just saying in one place that you're prohibiting the, the sale of lots, the issuance of building permits and site work, every, every place that we start making those kind of prohibitions, the site work prohibition was included. Um, going to the middle of page two, I did not make the changes that he recommended on the de minimis change section. And I did not have a, um, an opportunity to speak with him about that. Um, but. I believed it was the board's intent that unless you met, unless you were making a, a very specific kind of change that was not considered a de minimis change, any other change to a subdivision plat could be considered de minimis and that you were going to leave the discretion of whether it was eligible to be de minimis with me and then any appeal of that would go back to you using the normal procedures for making, for, for making an application to the board. So I guess I'm not I'm not that uncomfortable with making, um, defining a de minimis change in the negative. Um, and in fact, I, I have seen it done that way um, in another ordinance. Uh, and then finally, on the, on the last page, uh, he starts out talking about um, the extension request to the planning board going to the town planner. Um, and I did not make that change. It was my understanding that if uh, the board grants the site plan and you were going to establish a, um, an expiration date of one year from that date, that you had delegated to me authority to be able to extend that site plan. And if I didn't want to extend it, then it would go to you and you would make the decision. Um, if the board is not comfortable with that, I think with our, our attorneys recommending that instead it just it just goes directly to you for an extension and that I not be given any authority to extend those site plans. So I haven't made that change, but, but certainly that can be done. Um, I probably should stop in case you have any questions. I'll just say that, that um, I understand Michael's concern for the negative language, and I think almost 99% of all attorneys will, will say in any legal document, don't utilize negative uh, criteria. Um, because it, it opens up a whole can of legal worms. And, and I, so I understand what he's saying. I also understand the, the, the um, um, uh, how, how we intended to use that. I, I think understanding what he's saying and, and understanding what you're saying, we simply leave it the way it is. And if it proves to be a problem, then we'll say, you were right, Michael, and change it at that time. But, uh, uh, 99% of the time, attorneys will say not to use uh, um, negative criteria. I'm not advocating it to be in the affirmative either. Other questions? The issue with respect to uh, the uh, extension, request for an extension, is simply an uh, administrative issue. That uh, we don't want to tie the planning board up and having to review uh, extension requests? Uh, I, I think it was that and also 
that we're trying to get people, we're trying to set a time limit on site plan approvals and also trying to make people keep their approvals current so that if it expires, you can't, you can't extend it. But if they walk in the last day and they ask me to extend it, um, that I can do that for them. That seems very logical. I mean, there are, keeping track of those those issues from an applicant standpoint is, unless it's a full-time job, is difficult. And uh, I think making that process as easy as possible. I can't imagine convening the board and getting the board to approve something if someone comes in on the next to the last day. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I don't have any problem with a, with a planner handling that. Including just a year as opposed to giving them an extension till the next time we see them. I mean, we could see them. Because I'm wondering there could probably be any number of reasons someone would want an extension, possibly many of which we wouldn't want to grant one for. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I was just saying that. Uh, I don't know if I thought about that carefully, if I thought it was the planner granting year extensions, a year extension on a site plan, and if that's what we did intend. I, I certainly wouldn't mind some administrative thing that if someone's going to expire before they can get to mm -hmm. us, that there would be some even automatic provision mm -hmm. that the planner could just stamp it until they could get before the board. But I, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with just a blanket one-year extension that the planner can grant. I, I don't know if I missed that before or hadn't thought about it. Well, now is certainly the time to make that decision. You're referring to the 16.24F paragraph? No, that's a 90-day. Which one? No. Okay. That's not in this letter, but in the memorandum. It's on the, um, the second page on the bottom of, of the town, engineer, town attorney's letter where uh, he says, I would recommend that the extension be requested to the planning board rather than making the request upon the town planner who would refer it to the planning board. In reading, I remember reading through that. I, I agree with, with Mike Hill. Um, and I think his um, rationale was that it, why not be more direct in the, in the language as well as, as the, the accountability. In other words, we're making a two-step process. Take it to the planner who recommends it to the, to the board. Um, I think the intent of the language was to leave the option of referring it to the planning board open, um, but not requiring it, because the language says, which may be referred to the planning board for consideration. But the idea would be that, um, for example, if someone were to ask for an extension of a site plan approval in an area where there had recently been a rezoning, a, re, uh, a rezoning done, that maybe a, I, I wouldn't be willing to extend that approval because uh, the board may want to do that mm -hmm. um, in light of new zoning changes. But uh, Judy, is your point that you think that it should come back to the board every time due to the, the, more, the exposure of all the board members? Well, I guess yes. Any? In that we haven't had a, a deadline for site plan approval yet, and I'm not sure why people will want to get the extension. And I guess I would like a little bit of control over that first. And again, if there's some way, if it's simply an oversight and, oh my goodness, it's expiring, we can't get before the board, I don't mind an extension to get them here. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm personally prepared to grant a one-year extension, which in essence would double the time to do it without us looking at that. Is that the consensus of the board that it should come directly to the planning board for the extension? Well, I don't think that's what Judy just said. There's a, uh, not putting words in your mouth, but it sounded to me like it's a two-step process. There's a, uh, a one-month extension granted by the planner in order to get the applicant back to the board, and then the board determines whether or not the one-year extension should be granted. Is that what you said? That's okay. That's what it sounded like. I guess she didn't say that. I, that's probably what I meant. I think so. Sure. 
or is it just simply up to the applicant to get here in 11 at the 11th month and be sure that the applicant has adequate time in order to get before the board and request one year extension I can go either way not a which is 11th month 11th month responsible applicants it's not like a, a, I'm, I'm going to backtrack on my early statement. It's, it's not like we have a six-month uh, issue here. It's a, it's a whole year. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with Judy. If it were Maureen that we're dealing with for the next 40 years, and I wouldn't That's have a fine. problem <laughs> going through the town planner, but well, it's not who long knows who's going to show up in that desk at some point. I'd like to continue on that paragraph. I didn't understand the town attorney's comments, which followed that. He then went on to say he did not understand the necessity for that fifth sentence which I believe begins failure to comply with conditions and I'm not sure why and then he suggests substituting for cause shown standard which I don't know what that is so I don't know if we were not following his advice there or Maureen what what were you proposing to do there I, I was proposing to leave it the way it was um, I think what he was saying is that you can ex that, that you add the four cause shown standard as a, a reason for extending a site plan approval, that you would extend, extend it for cause shown, and that he didn't like the fact that I listed out all these things that don't necessarily extend approvals. Um, it's been my experience that these are, are very, very common uh, reasons, excuses, arguments, debates over why an approval has not expired. And that's why I, I, I deliberately put them in there, because um, I've often had debates on exactly this kind of thing, that, well, my, my approval didn't expire because I haven't met my conditions yet, or my approval didn't expire because of this reason, and, and these are the ones that I've, I've had the most problem with, and I guess it, it made me feel better to see it in black and white as not being something that you could use as a reason. It seems reasonable they stay in to me. I Okay. I guess we could always change it later if he convinces me otherwise. I, I think it's a case of him throwing in a legal clause for cause shown um, for uh, the safety net. Um, to go back to your, your, your prior comment, could you, Maureen, could you read the sentence as it would be changed in that paragraph? I think it's on page 10 if you're all following the bouncing ball there. Um, it's the second sentence under number four, and it would, it would now state, prior to the expiration of the site plan approval, the applicant may request one extension of up to one year from the planning board, period. Okay. <coughs> Any other? Uh, I'm just, sorry, Maureen. Just so you, you may want to note that it does say that they have to remake the request before the expiration. It doesn't say they have to get to the board before the expiration. But if they make the request and their site plan does expire before they get to the board, there's nothing we can do about an expired site plan, is there? I think that is not your 11th month comment. Yeah, yeah that's that is their responsibility to come in the 11th month. But we don't want any doubt. I mean, they they need to get here before they expire. How would we have to change the language to make that more clear? Prior to the expiration of the site plan approval. The applicant may be granted instead of may request. So the second sentence would read, prior to the expiration of site plan approval, the applicant may be granted one extension of up to one year from the planning board. I like the word request. But I, I think it's covered. It says prior to the expiration of the site plan approval. Okay. Yeah. Question here, and I just want to clarify this in my own mind. If someone were to come before us for a site planning um, extension, what criteria do we have to either affirm or deny that extension? That's where the, the town attorney was comment about for cause shown. That's why he's suggesting we add that phrase in there. That would be the only reason. He, he, there's nothing specific. So then why does it have to come to us? Why couldn't it stay in your hands? If it's going to come to us and we have no reason to really be able to deny it, then it comes before us and say yes, and they go away. Why couldn't it be much 
much simpler just go to the town planner and have her say yes and have it go away. Well, I think the planning board wants the the option at the, at the time of extension um, to say either yes or no. I mean, there are instances when. Um, but if there were problems, wouldn't that be something that involved the um, code enforcement officer with stop work orders, et cetera? Uh, not necessarily so. I don't think so. Am I wrong there? I mean, are, are in all instances, would the, the uh, for instance, uh, the company comes in with a site plan approval, um, makes half of the changes or the, or the conditions, uh, meets half the conditions of the uh, site plan approval, operates for uh, 11 months and comes back for, with an extension. Um, is, that, is that an instance where the board says you're operating in with, with a half a plan uh, completed? I'm not sure. <coughs> Under that circumstance, it seems to me that there would be a good reason for that to be for the marketplace or something. If the market was ready to accept their product, then they would use all the diligence to go out there and get the project done so they could reap the reward. You know, we're not really looking at a year here anyway, um, if someone is serious about developing, because they have a year, in essence, to obtain a building permit, because once they get the building permit, they're covered until their building permit expires. And I don't know what the deadline on you have a building permit before you reach a certain um, level of construction. But I guess if it came down to an expiration of the site plan, um, I, I guess I'm two different approaches right here. I think if someone wants us to extend something, it's because they haven't done anything, and I think we should review that. But I understand Mr. Parker's comment that if we have no standards to review that, I don't know if that would mean we should be giving blanket yeses or blanket noes. And if if that is the case with no standards to review it, why wouldn't the planner do it? Is that what you're saying? If we can't fall back on anything? <coughs> we have absolutely no right to say no. It sounds like if we don't have no standards by which to say that. Really, so we're forced to say no. Well, hasn't Maureen given us a list of things here under which we can say no? Certainly. And that doesn't for cause shown give us a, a big area of discretion in terms of whether we say yes or no? Right. Um, I'd probably add that for cause shown at the end of that sentence after planning board, uh, I'd further suggest that um, the board would go back to the original standards of subdivision of, of site plan review. Um, I would think that a very good reason for not extending a site plan is if you had had changes in the zone in the ordinance over the past year um, and felt that if this or this particular plan had not been able to uh, come to fruition over the past year, it should come back before you went to the new standards. Well, just, just so you know, the way I've usually seen site plan approval deadlines function is that they tend to clean up projects that have died a long time ago. And something that someone digs up from 10 years ago and dusts off and tries to trot in again, but it, it just makes it a lot clearer to do what you would reasonably do anyway, which is to say, this is a very old plan and you have to approach it from, from a brand new perspective. That was the initial intent of entering from making this change. Um, whether we're opening up a whole other can of worms, I'm not sure. But, uh, Judy? I guess I'm comfortable leaving it as it is and see how it works. With the, as, as uh, Maureen read it. The for cause, well, that it comes to the planning board instead right. of the planner, and that if it's just a matter of adding some clause saying for cause shown, I don't really understand what that means legally. If that's what we're asked to do, that's fine, and we'll just see how it works. Okay. Okay. And, and keeping in the rest of the language, though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next. I guess one, I hope a simple question. He also, on page two, one, 
fourth complete paragraph down, halfway through, he's talking about section 1625C in the subdivision ordinance, which is on page five of our revisions, which is under procedure. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about using the same language as containing this another section, which I assume you did, Maureen. But then he said, um, I would recommend that we include that the planning board may review a pro proposed amendment for compliance with the standards for subdivision design as set forth in the subdivision ordinance that is clearly the implication of this section, and I would recommend stating explicitly. explicitly. Is that something you have done? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would read to the board how I've drafted that. It, it, has, it has implicitly been what you have done in the past. Um, it would be, I think, on page five of your draft uh, that you have in front of you under um, section 1625 C procedure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what I've done is at, at under C, uh, the first line has stayed the same. I've added a second line which says the planning board may request a submission of information included in appendix A or B and shall review the, sub the subdivision amendment for compliance with the standards in section 16.3.1. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Just one last question from me. Um, how, as a result of the workshop, how did we leave the issue of um, um, septic system setback and clearing the, what's the language that I'm looking for? Building envelope? No. Limits of clearing. Where are we going to I mean we changed the definition uh, of building envelope to a very basic but um, were we going to add a definition for this? Well, the there's one thing that we said we need to do to set um, standards of, of uh, um, septic setback and limits of clearing. But I, I don't see this in the, in the change. Those, those are not included <coughs> in this. Okay. Should we add those? If you want to. But not tonight. Yes. <laughs> okay. I read everybody's lips. <laughs> and Mark's eyes. Going up to the clock. Any other comments? I have a good one, but I won't bring it up until after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. It has to do with an application before that was before the city of South the, of Portland that, as I understood, had a signed building permit, had site plan approval, and still didn't get built, even though the, the developer wanted to proceed with construction. But you will tell us later. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion on, on the uh, technical amendments? Mr. Chairman? Yes, I propose the following motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that the technical amendments as amended, further amended, be recommended to the town council for adoption. It's been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it's the unanimous vote. That was a real struggle. Technical amendments are always fun. Um, it's good that we have two new associate members. They started right off with <laughs> some of the pain of, of uh, dealing with... with uh, 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 well, it always was popping up. Is there any other business before the board? Seeing and hearing none, do I hear uh, a motion to adjourn? Moved. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yamamoto-san と一緒に京都へ行きます。いいですね。京都は見るところがたくさんありますよ。食べるものも美味しいし、ええ、いろいろなところへ行くつもりです。And that's all for today.